Hey everyone, I'm doing this little tag at the beginning of the video because I forgot to include two important things in the video. And I'm doing this handheld selfie mode, so I'm looking at the wrong part of the camera half the time because my tripod broke right after I did the video you're about to see. Uh, first of all, hey, my name is Lyle Caldwell. Lyle, L-Y-L-E, as in the very common name Lyle. Lyle love it. Lyle Caldwell. Look us up. We're awesome. Not Kyle. If you call me Kyle, you get a different hourly rate. Seriously, guys. Lyle. It's not that weird. Anyway, okay, that's my name. Nice to meet you guys. For those who don't know, um, I'm Psionic Audio. I'll cover the pronunciation and meaning of that in just a second. And the other thing, I forgot to say how long I've been doing this. Uh, about 30 years. I started for myself 30 years ago, went professional about 25 years ago. So I've been doing this quite a while. Uh, that and the kids explain the gray hair and the thinning hair. How depressing to see. <sighs> anyway, uh, here's more. Hey everyone, I get asked a lot of questions and I thought I'd answer some of them in a quick video. Uh, first of all, it's pronounced psionic audio, psionic. Uh, it's Greek, roughly means mental energy, mind power. Uh, I chose it both because of that and it's just a bad pun on sonic. So sonic audio, psionic audio. It's hard to name things. and Anyone who's ever been in a band knows that. Um, I'm sure there are people out there who've been in bands called the Corn Nuggets because it seemed like a good idea at the time. Anyway, you have one of those good ideas, you put it on the internet, and then you're psionic audio, and you have a name that no one can spell. And most people can't pronounce, but such is life, for me at least. Uh, second of all, uh, why don't you appear in the videos? It's just usually gu guitar and amps. A um, couple reasons. Number one, I only have the one camera. It's just my cell phone. Uh, later, I'll add more cameras and you know do multi shots. Uh, you know, you see all the videos where you see from this angle and you have that angle and overhead and all that stuff. Well, that takes a lot of technology, and I'm putting the money uh, for these videos first of all into upgrading my actual recording of amplifiers, and down the line I'll worry about uh, cameras and lighting rigs and all that, so everything can look professional. You know, it's really hard for me to do this one here because I'm very tall and my tripod is at its max height and I had to do a weird angle so all of me fits in. Um, just not set up for that. Um, and I'd rather keep the focus on the amplifiers and the guitar. Um, second reason, I don't want it to be one of those, I don't want to be a YouTube personality, not that I'm in any danger of that. But, you know, I want it to be about the amps, about what I actually know objectively about amplifiers, not about my personality, not about whether you like my musical taste or how I play or not. There's a million guys out there that are ph phenomenal. I just watched a Greg Koch uh, video, and it's just, you know, we should all give up, right? Uh, third of all, and, you know, it's, it's a big reason, is just stupid vanity. Uh, about two years ago, I had a health issue, and I've gained a lot of weight, and I don't like the way I look. Um... And uh, I just turned 50 the other day, and the day after I turned 50, I found out that I have gallstones, and I've got to have them removed, my gallbladder removed. So after the gallbladder is removed, hopefully I'll be feeling better. I can get back out on the bike and get to exercising, and maybe you'll see a, a, a svelte-looking Lyle in future videos. I'll put a picture up here of what I used to look like and why I don't like the way I look now. It's human nature. But, you know, aside from vanity... I want to keep the focus on the guitars. Um, I'll put a picture of this up here. This is kind of my get out of jail free card. Uh, about 25 years ago, I had a wood planer accident and I lost a big chunk of this finger and they did a skin graft, but it was down to the bone and I had some nerve damage. So if I do a bend, it's really hard for me to apply vibrato to that bend. And this finger is just kind of stupid. Uh, as a result, it's really slow, and it affects this finger. Um, so I used to be a much faster player before the wood planer. Um, I was going to get into some recording setups that I use and some questions I have about the best way to accurately accurately uh, represent amplifiers for you guys to hear and make decisions on, but I think that's going to be in-depth enough, in depth enough that I will do a, uh, a separate video on that. 
And uh, last, um, you, you know, usually you don't see this mic in front of me because you don't see me. Um, this is a Beta 87. It sounds great as long as I'm looking at the microphone. It's hypercardioid, uh, which means that if I'm doing a video where I go like this, all of a sudden the sound level drops. So I need to get like a lavalier, lavalier mic or something just for that. Um, but my focus is on how the amps are recorded. Of course, I've been playing this with this 57 recording, not even aimed at the speaker. Um, but, you know, this is just to have something in my hand so I don't feel like an idiot talking to a camera. This is that uh, hand-wired. Uh, I just replaced all the pots on. And the kids are asleep, so I've got the master volume down at like 8 o'clock, so... But, you know, this, quest, this video is not really about me, uh, or it shouldn't be, but I would like to know any questions you guys might have. Um, you know, I get asked questions all the time. Um, one big one is how long I've been, have I been doing this and how I got into this? Well, I was uh, an English major, which meant that I was qualified to say, what style like fries with this? And I was a musician, and I was gigging out, and my amplifier would die, or my pedal would stop working, or my guitar would cut out and I could not afford to take it to someone. So I, you know, back then I went to the library and looked up things that were available and uh, went to Radio Shack and got the crappiest possible gear and started fixing my guitar jack when it cut out, started fixing my cables when they went out. Oh, that's why that Boss Chorus pedal isn't working. Eventually into amplifiers and burned things and zap things and did all the things wrong on my own amps to the point where I actually was kind of getting good at it. And I started fixing amps for friends and I got better and better at it. And things just began to click. And uh, it's not like you say, you learn this, you learn this, you learn this, you learn this, and then you end up where you want to be. It's a whole process of little things clicking until the grand picture clicks. And um, I used to do IT work and computer work. And it's, to me, it's the same series of problem solving. So. Once you understand the conditions a triode needs to operate, uh, once you understand the conditions a pentode needs to operate, once you understand uh, low-pass and high-pass filters, and later the intricacies of impedance and all that stuff, all these things click until you get a, a really good picture. And um, I'm not going to say I'm an amp guru or an amp expert. I think I'm very good at what I do. There are always gaps in anyone's knowledge, and I have friends who do what I do, and where I have gaps, I go to them and ask their opinions or ask their advice. And where they might have gaps, they come to me. So it's a very supportive network. So if I don't know the answer to something, I know how to find out the answer. Uh, that said, 95% of the time, I already know the answer. So I don't want to present myself as the guru, the amp guru, the ampologist or any of that nonsense. Um, I don't know everything. I'm trying to. I'm on the path. I'm getting there. Uh, but I do good work. I'm very proud of my work. It's one of the reasons I show my work on YouTube, on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. I want people to know what I do, why I do it. If you have me work on your amp, I want you to see what you're getting. I don't want it to be a bunch of techno jargon that a guitarist doesn't understand. I'll answer any questions I have. Um, I don't want you to think that your car needs an oil change and I end up selling you a new carburetor or transmission, it's, you know, to use that analogy. So if an amp comes in and if it, all it needs is some air in the tires, I do that. If something's wearing out and it's about to give, I'll let you know. I'll. Nothing gets done without the client's approval ahead of time and knowledge during the process. And I try to explain everything uh, as clearly as possible. I could just use the tech speak. I try to translate for musicians, not that musicians aren't intelligent, but it's a different vocabulary you learn. Um, so let me know if you have any questions you'd like me to answer. I'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Uh, maybe some things will be good ideas for videos. And again, it's not about me trying to be the amp guy on YouTube. You know, I do what I do. I try to do a very good job. And this is a way for me to let people know what I do. It's advertising. It's uh, exposure it's all that stuff but it also keeps me honest because if i do a crappy job and two thousand people see it and maybe hopefully one day ten thousand people would know if i did a crappy job um keeps me from doing a crappy job on your amp god that sounds like a sales plug i don't want to be a sales weasel you know it's it's a weird thing talking to a camera 
Um, I used to do theater. It's much easier if you're playing a character. Uh, when it's you and the red light's rolling, you want to be interesting, you want to be engaging, and you feel like such a jackass doing it. That's my experience anyway. <laughs>